Da 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 da! I feel as if... <laughs> That's it! I'm sure of it! Indeed. However...
well. So then, goodbye. Forgiveness!
I feel. Mm -hmm. That's it. I'm sure of it. Hmm. Hmm. Well, it would seem. Sorry. However, mm. of course.
<laughs> Most unfortunate. <laughs> Actually, indeed. Hmm? What are you doing out this late? Oh, um, I was just. Are you planning to go exercise, perhaps? What? How did you know? Because I can see a blue track jacket sticking out of that duffel bag you're carrying. Oh, you're right. Thanks. Well, I'd better get going. I'm kind of in a hurry. <sighs> yes, indeed. Um, so, uh, I'm getting tired of waiting. Shall we just pl-
Then, it's the moment you've all... I've been waiting for the class. You remember where to meet, right? Please go through the red door on the first floor of the school. <laughs> See you soon. Yo. Huh? Huh? Come on! What are you gonna do? Let's go. Hey, come on. It's true.
Let's begin with a basic explanation of the class trial. So, your votes will determine if you can figure out who done it, then only they will receive punishment. Then I'll punish everyone besides the blackened, and the one that deceived everyone else will graduate. Okay then. So, first off, let's talk about the murder weapon! Chihiro's fatal injury. It appears it was a head wound. According to the Monokuma file, the killer used a... Blunt, what kind of blunt instrument could it have been? I bet it was an iron pipe. Interesting. That certainly would make for a powerful weapon. Poor Chihiro. Oh. Chihiro's fatal injury. It appears it was a... According to the Monokuma file, the killer used a blunt instrument. But what kind of blunt instrument could it have been? I bet it was an iron pipe. No, that's wrong. Can we agree that the object that dealt the fatal blow was the dumbbell, found at the scene of the crime? It was covered in blood. And there was nothing else at the scene that could have caused that kind of injury. And the wound on the victim's head is consistent with the shape of the dumbbell. As far as I'm concerned, there's no mistake. You... looked at her head wound? Yay! That's so creepy! If you don't mind, I will proceed from here. Let's move on to discussion of the culprit. Although, I believe the criminal behind this heinous act is already quite clear. What? For real? Chihiro's killer is the fiendish serial killer, Genocide Jack. The culprit is Genocide Jack. I'm sure of it. Case closed, as far as I'm concerned. But... that's impossible! Why? What makes it impossible? Well, I mean... come on! There's just no proof for it! No, that's wrong!
I might know one reason he could be involved. What? I found this file while I was... I guess it's some kind of confidential file the police put together about the Genocide Jack case. What? That's kind of weird as shit, isn't it? What was something like that doing in the library? The why of it is probably more trouble than it's worth. So let's forget about that for now. More importantly, it outlines all the specifics of every Genocide Jack case in exceeding detail. According to the file, there appear to be two defining characteristics in every Genocide Jack. The first is that a bloody message is found written at the scene of every murder. Oh, that's right. Boob lust. Ah, uh, no. It's actually bloodlust. But more important is the other characteristic. And it's something that has never been made public. Never made public? What the hell is it? Why don't you tell them, Makoto? I got it! Apparently, in every Genocide Jack, other than the killer, the only people who know about this are the higher-ups in the police department. However, Chihiro was most definitely suspended in the same way. So, how did the culprit know about this when only high-level police officials were aware of it? There's only one logical answer I can think of. It's because the culprit in this case is the real Genocide Jack. No fucking way! You're saying Genocide Jack is one of us? Yes. In fact, it's Toko. What? Genocide Jack's true identity is Toko Fukawa. You lie! Wh what? Hey, okay, wait, hold on a sec. Toko has, like, bloodophobia or whatever, remember? Is Toko Genocide Jack? The answer is yes and no. Another riddle. Now I understand! Is it because Genocide Jack has a split personality? Huh? I think I read that somewhere in the file, too. They thought that the suspect might have... What did they call it? Dissociative Identity Disorder. Oh, okay. But still, to go and say that about Miss Fukawa is... Perfectly acceptable. Toko's strange behavior after seeing the body is proof enough that she has a split personality. Shoot! I got it! You're talking about how- That's right. Think back. Shh. 
she was acting funny, that's for sure. That melancholy tone of hers come- Don't go assigning adjectives to my tone without permission. Not to mention, once she regained consciousness and saw Chihiro's body again, she was utterly calm. In other words, within her is one personality that can handle blood, and one that obviously can. <laughs> so when Toko trapped herself in her room, it's because she was scared of Genocide Jack? The reason she locked herself in her room wasn't to keep other people from getting in. It was to keep her other personality from getting out. What? Toko was afraid. Afraid of the murderous fiend inside of her. Of killing e- uh, uh, How? Yeah. How can you know all this? I do believe you misunderstood her. What she's trying to say isn't, how can you know all this? No. What she wants to know is, how could you tell them? Huh? Last night, just before Monokuma gave his motive speech, Toko and I had a strange conversation. She told me a most interesting story. She said, a murderous fiend lived within her, and she was afraid it could appear and attack at any time. And that trepidation is what's caused her to have such a bleak attitude. Isn't that right, Toko? <laughs> this is all a lie. Right, Toko? You said you wouldn't tell anyone. What? You promised? I can't believe you lied! You have only yourself to blame. You came to me with your tragic little story. I didn't ask you to. This is the real world, not some romantic fantasy fairy tale. <laughs> Besides, you broke your promise first. You said that as long as you were here, no matter what, you wouldn't let Genocide Jack kill anyone. But in spite of that promise, you said if I kept my promise, you would go out with me. That's the only reason I promised. How many times do I have to tell you? I never said that, but you weren't able to do it. You... You just couldn't resist that rush you got from killing. I, I tried. I swear I tried to control it. <laughs> but your efforts were useless. What a disappointment. I hate you. Well, the opening act is nearly finished. All that's left is to hear from the person in question directly. The person? You don't mean... Hello there! Is it me you were hoping to see? Yes! yes you, what the heck? So you figured it out, huh? Well, whatever. What are you gonna do? I'm the ultimate murderous fiend, Genocide Jack! Or better yet, let's go with Genocide Jill! What the fuck is this? Toko, what happened to you? Not Toko, that's a loser name. And what happened is a textbook split personality. One of them happens to be a serial killer. You should turn a blind eye to one <laughs> She's so intense. Like they say, sound and murderous mind, sound and murderous body. This one is so different from the one we've come to know. Yes, well, the world is composed of a front and a back, you know. Just like how every inning has a top and a bottom, or how behind every dark and gloomy soul lives another that shines as bright as the <laughs> um, Miss Jack, uh, uh, Jill, what's up? Some of us think you might be the mastermind behind our entire situation. What are your
your thoughts on that? Well, I'll tell you. I am the mastermind of all masterminds! Just kidding! Then it's not true? Of course it's not true! How dare you try to link me to that creepazoid! And another thing, the police and government and society in the outside world are totally powerless! I mean, they just let this idiotic bloodthirsty maniac go buck wild all over town! Sure, I'm a bloodthirsty maniac, but life is pain, right? To live is to hurt other people. It's a necessary evil if you want to survive. The act of living itself causes pain for everyone. Just kidding again! <laughs> this should be enough to convince you. This murderous fiend is responsible for Chihiro's death. There's clearly a motive, so there should be no doubt. A motive? Remember what Monokuma told us? If someone didn't murder and graduate within 24 hours, an embarrassing memory or secret would be revealed. Well, let's assume that Toko's secret was about Genocide Jack. If a secret like that came to light, Toko's life would have undoubtedly been forever ruined. So she had a very clear motive to never have that side of herself exposed. Interesting. Very, very, very interesting. But sorry, as much as I hate to admit it, I'm not the culprit. Huh? But I cannot imagine anyone other than you could... Maybe so, maybe so, but nevertheless, it's the truth. Do you really expect any of us to believe you? Yeah. I could never believe a word you say, you monster. But I didn't kill anyone! You say that, but do you really expect any of us to believe it? Perhaps if you had an alibi, that would change things. Oh, an alibi, huh? Now we're talking! When you compare your past murders to this incident, the modus operandi matches completely. What more proof do we need? <laughs> Give it up. You killed her. Sorry, but I didn't... You say that, but do you... Perhaps if you had an... Oh, an L When you compare your past murders to this, the modus operandi matches complete. No, that's wrong! Are the methods of murder really exactly the same? I'm not so sure about that. I think there's a slight difference between the Genocide Jack cases and this one. Huh? How's it any different? Uh-oh, you don't know? Well then, human garbage, let me tell you! I murder with passion and conviction. I consider myself a professional, and I have a very particular way of doing things. Imagine you go to a fancy Italian restaurant. They're very picky about the noodles, the sauce, everything. But what happened to Chihiro? It'd be like if that same Italian restaurant started using ragu or Chef Boyardee. This is no creation of mine. Let me rephrase that in a way that maybe makes more sense. There are two clear differences between the Genocide Jack cases and this one. I got it! For one, the cause of... In the Genocide Jack murders, all the victims were killed the same way. According to the case file, they were all apparently killed with... a pair of scissors. But Chihiro died from a blow to the head, right? Ah, yes! That is remarkably different from the other murders. Wouldn't it be strange for someone who kills the same way without fail to suddenly change their method? And there's more. One more conflicting detail. That's right! In my recipe of murder, if the bloody message is the tortellini, then the arrangement of the body would be the pesto sauce! Could you please stop comparing killing people to cooking? So... 
Are you saying the other difference has to do with how the body was arranged? I got it! Do you remember what the killer used? They used some kind of rope to hang her up by her wrists. What is your point? Well, in all the previous Genocide Jack cases, some... Specifically, pairs of razor-sharp scissors. And guess what? I use my own specially designed scissors for the murders and the arrangement! Like I said, I'm a professional, so naturally I'm very picky about the tools I use. And, 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 and you know what else? Big Mac said there's two differences, but he's wrong. Big Mac? Are you referring to me? Listen up, Big Mac. There's... A huh? My word, you really didn't notice? Take a look at who the victims were in each Genocide Jack case. There's a pattern there, just waiting to be discovered. A pattern? Figure that out, and it'll be plain as death why I couldn't have possibly killed that little lolly girl. I got it! Is it because Chihiro was a girl? Thank what are you talking about? In all the Genocide Jack cases, all the victims had something in common. They were all... guys? That's right! The people I kill with such passion and conviction are all adorable little men! <laughs> I can't believe I said it! I'm so embarrassed! The hell is wrong with you? I can't help it! I'm just a full-throttle boy-on-boy fangirl! And the mopey side of me just hates it! But now I'm on the fast track to becoming a full-fledged fan madam! So since Chihiro was a girl and not an adorable little man, you wouldn't kill her? Would an Italian chef suddenly start making ramen just because they're both noodles? Don't be stupid! I have too much passion and conviction to cross that line! That's the absolute reality of the one and only! We get it. You've clearly explained your hobby and your philosophy. But that's not all there is to it. It's a different matter entirely. When you're forced to kill in order to survive. Quiet, lowly cur! Lowly... cur? I would never kill for a reason as petty as mere survival. And if by some fluke I did kill to survive... Why would I bother with the message and arrangement? It'd make me the obvious suspect! That does make some amount of sense. Plus, whatever reason I have for killing, I would never leave out my prized scissors! Who would go out of their way to use a big, stupid, heavy dumbbell? Maybe you used the dumbbell because you couldn't find any scissors in the school? And... just use any scissors. I only use my own set of high-class envy of the entire world scissors! Okay, whatever. There still aren't any in the school. Are you sure about that? Da-da-da-da! <laughs> She's fully equipped! That's right! So I can kill anywhere, anytime! Why would I resort to dumbbells or rope when I have my trusty scissors by my side? Go ahead, tell me I'm wrong. You can't, can you? Gutter dogs, all of you. Not to mention, I have no clue how to tie a good knot. <laughs> so rope's totally out of the question anyway. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on anymore. Could such a heinous villain really be innocent? But the body really was suspended, right? And nobody but the police knew about that. Yeah. That's why we figured it had to be the real deal, and not some copycat killer or whatever.
Here's my answer. Byakuya, it's possible you could have found out, isn't it? You'd have no problem gaining access to classified government documents or internal police records. Plus, you'd already looked through the genocide jack file before this all happened, hadn't you? Are you saying Mr. Togami did it? Then, the reason he pushed the theory of Genocide Jack being the killer so hard was because he wanted to pin the crime on her. So, he rearranged the scene to disguise it and make it look like I put my stamp on it! The adorable glasses man was behind it all! Oh, I'm on fire! Well, Byakuya, what's your response? I see. So now the suspicion falls on me. Then I must ask. When would you say I began acting suspicious? Surely you must have an answer. Hmm. Looking back and thinking about it now, the way you were acting right before we discovered the body was a little strange. You wanted to go to the girls' locker room right away, right? But since you're a guy... I should have naturally thought of the boys' locker room first. Is that what you want to say? The victim was Chihiro, a girl. Hence why I said we should check the girls' locker room. Nothing strange about that. On the contrary, there's something very strange. Okay then, what's so strange about it? Go ahead, share with the rest of the class. said Byakuya was acting kind of weird before we found the body. But he was acting weird... how? If you're presented with the opportunity to check out the girls' locker room, you absolutely take it! That's a natural reaction for any guy! The victim was Chihiro, who was a girl. So of course I would suggest we check the girls' locker room first. There was no time for pointless distractions. What's so strange about that? I wish you'd taken me with you. So, you said Biak, but he was acting... If you're presented with the opportunity, that's unnatural! The victim was Chihiro. So, of course, I would suggest we check the girl's lock. There was no time for pointless distraction. What's so strange about that? I wish you'd taken me with you. So, you said Byakuya was acting kind of weird before we found the body. But he was acting... If you're presented with the opportunity, that's unnatural! The victim was Chihiro. No, that's wrong! I'll tell you what's so strange about that. Because up until we actually discovered the body, we couldn't have known who the victim was. So your claim that you went to the girls' locker room first because Chihiro was the victim doesn't hold up. I see. That's a good answer, I must admit. Interesting. Very interesting indeed. But your reasoning is still too weak. Huh? What's wrong? Is that it? Surely you've got more than that. Go ahead. Show us. What's the matter? You're not finished already, are you? There... There is. There is more to it. Think about it. We just talked about the differences between this case and past Genocide Jack incidents. The proof you're looking for is hidden in there. Oh? Proof that I'm the culprit, you mean? What? 
The difference between the cases? You want me to explain it again? When I want to kill, I use my very own special scissors. And I use those same scissors to arrange the body. But Chihiro was suspended with... It was some kind of rope, was it not? That's right! It absolutely was! Then there must be something very fishy indeed about that rope. Hey, Byakuya, where'd you get it from, huh? I'd never seen that rope before in my life. Obviously, somebody else must have had it hidden away somewhere. What? The difference between you want me to explain when I want to kill, and I use those things. But Chihiro, it was some kind of... That's right! It... Then there must be some... Hey, Byakuya, where'd you get it from, huh? I'd never seen that rope before in my life. Obviously, somebody else must have had it hidden away somewhere. What? The difference? You want me to explain when I want to kill, and I use those things? But Chihiro, it was some kind of... That's right! It... Then there must be something very... Hey, Byakuya, where'd you get it from, huh? I've never seen that rope before in my life. No, that's wrong! Actually, I'm pretty sure you have seen it before. Because, you see, that rope, or should I say, that extension cord? What? An extension cord? Yakuya. You've used the extension cord in the library more than once, haven't you? And the same extension cord that was in the library all this time... ...went missing after the murder. And there's no way someone who uses that extension cord as much as you do... ...wouldn't discover that fact. Then Byakuya must be the one who took the extension cord. I can't imagine any other possibility. That's really what you think? Then your conclusion is something like this? I killed Chihiro in the girls' locker room, then hung her up and wrote that bloody message. I intentionally made it look like Genocide Jack was behind it. Is that about right? What's wrong? I asked you- Hell yes, that's what happened! So that's it, right? Byaki is the killer! I don't disagree with not disagreeing! He kept calling this a game, right? So he'd be totally willing to do something like this to win! Um, sorry, but could we hold on just a second? I... I think we need to talk about this a little more. Huh? Do we really need to? I know, but still, there's something that's still bothering me. Is that right? And what, pray tell, is still bothering you? I killed her in the girls' locker room then disguised my crime. Specifically, I dressed it up to make it look like it was the work of a homicidal psychopath. What about all that bothers you? I got it! You say you killed Chihiro in the girls' locker room, right? But are you sure about that? Isn't it possible that the murder took place somewhere else? How disappointing. What kind of question is that? She was found dead in the girls' locker room. There is absolutely no question about that. How could the scene of the crime have been anywhere else? Well, I think it's entirely possible that she was killed somewhere else, then carried there later, along with the rest of the murder scene. The... rest of the murder scene? That was awfully specific. Please tell me you have a reason for saying all of that. I believe I do. Hey! Don't just move on without permission! What do you mean she was killed somewhere else? Come on, Makoto. If there's any chance the murder took place somewhere else, let's see the proof.
I got it! The proof that she was killed somewhere else is... the poster that's hanging in each locker room. Your proof is some posters? The poster in the girls' locker room was a picture of a big boobed supermodel. But don't you think that's kind of strange? Why would the girls' locker room have a poster like that? I bet those massive jugs of hers were totally fake! <laughs> Meanwhile, the boys' locker room had a poster of the super popular boy band Tornado. Again, that doesn't really seem to belong in a boys' locker room. So you're saying that maybe the posters were switched? And there's one other thing I noticed about the locker rooms. You know what I'm talking about. Right, Sakura? You're referring to my protein coffee, aren't you? Protein coffee? While I was in the girls' locker room earlier, I spilled some protein coffee on the carpet. But I noticed that after the murder, the stain had been totally scrubbed away. I got it! The stain on the girls' lo In fact, I found it on the boys' locker room carpet. That's definitely the stain from my protein coffee. Then, does that mean that the carpets were switched too? But why would anyone do that? To move the murder scene from one locker room to the other. It's certainly plausible, don't you think? What? In other words, in order to completely swap the scene of the crime, the bloodstained poster and carpet were moved along with the dead body. By doing this, the killer was able to change the entire room where the murder took place. I can certainly follow your reasoning, but why would the culprit bother doing that, huh? Why would they go through all that trouble of switching the scene of the crime? Actually, an even bigger question. If the, then how did Chihiro get in the boy's locker room in the first place? Ah! To get into the locker rooms, you have to swipe your e-handbook across the card reader device. But Chihiro's handbook should have only allowed her access to the girls' locker room. She had no way to get into the boys' locker room to begin with. No, she did have a way! And I can tell you what it was! I highly doubt that. Shut up! I'm telling you, I know how she could have done it! Is it really possible? Could Chihiro really have gotten into the boys' locker room somehow? Ah! I got it! She must have hacked her e-handbook! She was the ultimate programmer, after all. I'm sure that would have been no problem for- No, I don't think that's it. She used the thing that was in the main hall. Huh? What thing? I'm talking about Leon's handbook, of course. No, that's wrong! No, I don't think Chihiro used Leon's handbook. Why not? Because Leon's handbook was broken. Oh. Well, then, yeah, I guess that'd be pretty impossible, huh? I am struck silent by how quickly you gave up. Plus, isn't there a regulation against using someone else's handbook? Actually, the rule states that loaning your handbook is prohibited. It says nothing about borrowing one. In other words, you could borrow a dead person's handbook all you want, and you'd be safe. Yup, yup, yup! Hit the nail square on the noggin! Of course, if it were broken, that wouldn't make any sense anyway. So then, she must have hacked hers like I said. She used her ultimate programmer skills and... Psst! You can't fix an e-handbook. The instant you open one up, a security buzzer starts blaring. So if she didn't use Leon's handbook, and she didn't modify her own handbook... Maybe Mr. Nayagi's initial assumption is just... wrong? It seems like there's no way she could have got into the boys' locker room. So I guess so. Okay then, I vote for Byakuya!
Hold on a second. I agree with you, though. I think you're on the right track. What the... You finally decide to open your mouth and that's what you've got to say? There's no way she could get in the boys' locker room, right? So... Why are you so sure she couldn't get in? There's still one other way she could have gained access. What? What are you talking about? What other way is there? Well, to explain that, why don't we take a little break from the trial? I'd like you all to come see something. Wait, 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 wait. Just what do you think you're doing? Don't worry. This'll make the whole trial more exciting. I'm sure that thought must please you. Huh? It'll make things more exciting? Well, all right then. I declare an official class trial recess. Huh? For real? Now then, what is it you want to show us? It better not be boring or I'll be very unhappy. Oh, I have no doubt it'll meet your lofty expectations. So, shall we go? The girls' locker room? We've already searched this place to I'd like you to examine the victim's body one more time. Be sure to examine the entire body very carefully. Take your time. Examine her. No way, no way, no way, no way, no way! It's probably best if I don't run my hands. It's not that I'm creeped out or anything, it's just... Based on religious grounds, you know? Very well. I'll do it. But, but you're a girl. You shouldn't have to touch a dead body. Just let one of the boys do it. No, it's okay. I think Chihiro would rather have a girl examine her. So just leave this to me. S sakura What is this? Some kind of secret girl-on-girl -girl action? Is that what you two are about? That's not it at all. Stop screwing around. Okay, here I go. I'm sorry, Chihiro. Please excuse the intrusion. Be sure to check her entire body, and I believe we will solve this particular mystery. Her entire body? I know you say that, but... What? This is... What is this... What is it? Not possible. It's not possible. This... this girl is... Is what? Is a boy! Ah, I see. So, she was actually a he. Interesting. What? You're joking, right? I wouldn't joke about this. Th th then... Then it's really true? Chihiro was... a guy? Hmm? Oh, what, you guys didn't know? Heck, I knew that right off the bat! Chihiro Fujisaki was totally a guy! Then... he was a cross-dresser? Oh, no, I'm really on fire! I wish I had killed him! So that's what Kyoko wanted to show everyone, huh? Interesting. <laughs> yes, that certainly does make things much more exciting. Now let's ride this wave of excitement back to the courtroom and get back to the trial. Ahem, <clears throat> I do apologize for keeping you waiting. Now then, let's resume the class trial. We've all just learned of the shocking revelation that Chihiro was actually a boy. Let's pick up from there. Yes, well, I don't know his reason for hiding it, but the fact is, Chihiro was not a girl, but a boy. And because the victim was male, he would have had no problem gaining access to the boys' locker room. Assuming his handbook did, in fact, list his gender as male, then yes, that would be true. Of course his handbook said he was a boy. He dressed like a girl, but he was a boy through and through. So then, there should be no issue with Makoto's initial assertion. The victim was killed in the boys' locker room, and was then later moved to the girls' locker room. 
and the killer could have easily used Sayaka or Junko's handbook to get into the girl's locker room. So Chihiro really was killed in the boy's locker room? I still don't understand the motive for moving the body, but yes, that does seem plausible. Well, I must admit, I did find it rather odd. I knew he felt a little... off. There was a certain incongruity to his female body. This is a most titillating situation! So now everything has been connected. All the mysteries have finally become clear. Okay, well, connected or clear or whatever. <laughs> very interesting. This has become very interesting indeed. Ah, he's off in his own little world. What about you, Makoto? After everything we've learned, do you still think Byakuya is the killer? Well, without a doubt, Byakuya is the one that made Chihiro's death look like Genocide Jack did it. But... But I... I think he might not actually be the killer after all. What? But aren't you the one who... He just seems to be too... easygoing about all this. Like he's enjoying us solving the mystery. The way he's acting, it makes it seem like it doesn't have anything to do with him. And you think that might be because it doesn't have anything to do with him? Plus, the evidence he left behind was a little too... How can I put it? Overt. He consciously chose to use the extension cord, knowing it could connect him to the murder. At least, that's how I see it. And Byakuya, when you found out the murder took place in the boys' locker room, it seemed to rattle you. And then again when you found out Chihiro was actually a guy. If you really were the killer, that stuff wouldn't have had any effect on you. So that's your thinking, huh? Well, it bothers me that you don't have more concrete reasons, but... It's fine. I guess I'll mark it as correct, for the time being. Mark it as... correct? He's right. I am not the culprit. I just happened to come across the corpse in the girls' locker room and decided to alter it. Are you fucking with us right now? No, I am not effing with you right now. I'm telling you the truth. Well, I find it very hard to believe! Go ahead. Find it very hard to believe. You're free to be executed along with the rest of us. If you're really telling the truth, then... Why? Why do you do that to his body? My reasons hardly matter right now. Uncovering the culprit is much more important, wouldn't you say? Now then... If it wasn't me, who was it? Well, I don't think I can say for sure without talking about it a little more. We're seriously gonna keep going? We're all good, aren't we? I thought it was clear Byakuya did it. No, I'm with Makoto. If there's any doubt whatsoever, we need to explore every possibility. Because if we're wrong, we all die here. That's true. Very well then, I'm with you too. Damn straight. Kill me. Do you not have a mind? Of course I do. What am I, an ant or something? Anyway, let's discuss this all as a group. That's very true. Our lives are all on the line. Excellent. Then shall we resume our game of hide and seek? Isn't there a single clue that might lead us to who did it? Well, clues are one thing, but... Did nobody get a look at the killer? I'm sure if someone saw the killer, they would have said something by now. Perhaps someone saw the victim at some point. Yeah, all we need right now is any kind of new win- It's over. It's all over. You want to know who saw the- The killer! And only the killer! And it's not like they're just gonna turn themselves game over, man! Yeah! No! Not game over! Isn't there a single clip? Well, cl did nobody get- I'm sure if someone saw the- Perhaps someone saw the victim at- Yeah. All we need right now is any kind of new info. Shoot! Isn't there a single clip? Well, cl did nobody get- I'm sure if someone saw the- Perhaps someone saw the victim at- Yeah. 
I'm it's over. It's you want to know who saw the victim? The killer. And only the... No, that's wrong. I believe someone else did see the victim before he was... Now that you mention it, yes. I did see him. Huh? Really? Oh, but I suppose only Makoto knows about this. The rest of you had no idea, did you? Whatever! Just it was last night. I saw him stuffing a track jacket into a duffel bag. And then, I assume, he headed off to exercise. A track jacket and a duffel bag? But we It seems likely that the culprit destroyed them to get rid of- And that is when he said something that struck me as rather odd. Chihiro told me- But, why would he be in a hurry? Only if someone were waiting for him, I should think. So, Mr. Fujisaki was on his way to meet with someone, and then they were going to work out together? But Hina and I had invited him to exercise with us plenty of times, and he always declined. Probably because he was afraid you'd find out the secret he was hiding, right? Which means that conversely, he must have trusted whoever he was meeting with enough so that he was willing to risk his secret. <laughs> what a marvelous friendship! The point is, whoever he met up with is the culprit, right? So we just gotta figure out who it was. But knowing what we know, I can't even guess. No, you already have what you need to make the connection. Huh? You know who the killer is. S seriously Who is it? Who's the killer? Think back to the track jacket and duffel bag the killer disposed of. Focus on the details of these items, and it should become obvious who was waiting for him. Are you sure about that? You really think we can figure out who did it based on two pieces of evidence that we don't have? What? You want to track down some fingerprint? Even if we had the equipment for that. As was noted, the evidence is already gone. There's nothing to get fingerprints from. Maybe. But we can make certain inferences if we just take the time to talk it out. Easy for you to say, but fine. Celeste, did you notice anything special about the bag was just a norm? All the bags in there are the same, so I can't imagine what would make that one special. Well, if I remember right, there was a decent variety of tracksuits to choose from. Do you think there might be some connection? Perhaps. Let's explore that and talk a bit more about the jacket he- First of all, we know where Chihiro was headed. He was on his way to go exit, so next we have- Why did he choose the specific tracksuit that he did? What do you mean the spe- I got it! He picked that tr It matched the one the culprit was wearing! So, what your- The killer was wearing the same blue tracksuit as him. My tracksuit is black! I- I don't need- Cause exercising- I have a white tracksuit for- I got it from the warehouse if Did any of that really help us get any closer? No way. Not a chance. First of all, he was on his way, so next week, why did he choose? What do you mean this? I got it! It matched the one- So, what's your- The killer was wearing the same blue tracksuit as him? My tracksuit is black! Shoot! First of all, we know he was on his way, so next week, why did he choose? What do you mean this? I got it! It matched the one- So, the killer was wearing the same blue tracksuit- no, that's wrong! Hold on a second, Mondo. What did you just say? Huh? 
what I say. When Celeste testified a few minutes ago, she never said anything about the jacket's color. So why did you say Chihiro's blue tracksuit? What are you... you just... Hey, Celeste, what color was Chihiro's tracksuit? As a matter of fact, it was blue. And before we began the trial, did you tell anyone that? The only one I told about any of this was you. Then, Mondo, how did you know what color Shihiro's tracksuit? Well, because I... I just... I'm, I'm sure he saw the clothes at some point in the investigation. No, that can't be it. The bag and clothes were surely disposed of by the time we began our inv- Then the only reason he could have known what color the tracksuit was is if he saw Cherry with it before he died! That's the only possible- Cherry? Our... So, how about it? Did you see the tracksuit or didn't you? Just by chance. I just happened to see it last night. He walked past me, and he was carrying the tracksuit in his hands. No, that can't be it either. According to Celeste's testimony, When Celeste noticed it, Chihiro made a point of making sure the jacket was completely in the- If you just ran into him briefly, you couldn't possibly have seen what color the tracksuit was. Yeah. Yeah. It would appear you've dug your own grave. Perhaps. But you handed him the shovel, didn't you? That's why you said what you did. Focus on the tracksuit and it'll be obvious who he met with? What a bunch of nonsense. Ah, now I understand. It was all one big bluff, wasn't it? Your true intention was to draw a slip of the tongue from the culprit. That's why you said you knew who did it, to put them on edge. That's right. However, Mondo was my target all along. I had my suspicions about him from the very beginning. But why? What made you so suspicious? That's a good question. There was a certain turn you... You can notice? Are you a witch? She's a witch! No. I'm not nearly as frightful as someone... Yeah. Mondo, was it really you? Did you really... kill Chihiro? I... I... I didn't kill anyone! You've been all over me, judging everything I say, putting words in my mouth. What gives you the right to treat me like a goddamn criminal? Yeah! He would never do something like that! This is a false accusation! It's true. My reasoning on that is pretty shaky. That was fast. Well, this does present us with a prop. <laughs> my time has nearly come. That's what my little ghost friend is- Oh yeah, that reminds me. Really? Actually, you know, now that I'm- Jeez, is your confidence- <laughs> Um, here it is. Hmm? What do you have there? It happens to be an e-handbook. I found it laying on the ground, so I scooped it up. Shoot! I got it! We know Chihiro's handbook for a fact. For a fact in I was totally sure that it must hold some clue about- Well, that's what I was hoping. I imagine the culprit broke it to get rid- That's odd. I didn't think the handbooks were quite so... fragile. You're right. They're not. They're totally waterproof and shot -free. And yet, this one does for all your confidence. That is a remarkably high failure rate. Hoo-hoo-hoo! <laughs> Do you think there might be some kind of mystery in there somewhere? How precisely did the handbooks get broken? I got it! You already told us before that the handbook- Yeah! You remember that? Uh, uh, sure, maybe I let that slip, but I never told- But if the handbook is supposed to never break- Then we can only assume that someone's figured out its weakness. You know what the weakness is. Right, Monokuma? So, what is it? Huh? You're asking me? I think it's a necessary piece of information if you want this to be a fair trial. But if I tell you, and someone else decides to copy it, 
That would be very not good. Just tell us already. Why would we want to break our own handbooks? <sighs> oh, well. I have a weakness, then allow me to make a special announcement. The weak point of when it's exposed to high temperatures for too long, it will suffer a meltdown and I flippin' knew it! You knew it? Yeah, cause I found the handbook laying on the floor of the sauna. The temperature in the sauna can reach over 200 degrees. Strange how you don't get burnt, huh? It's because as your sweat evaporates, it creates a cooling layer of air around your skin. If the hot air of the sauna were somehow pushed directly onto your skin, you'd definitely get fried. That layer of air would get blown away. That's why you may feel a burning when you move around. So when you're in a sauna, make sure to keep nice and still. Wow, interesting. I learned one new fact today. That is a mere trifling speck of knowledge. Anyway, if you found the victim's handbook in the sauna, then the killer must have been purposely trying to raise its temperature in order to break it. Meaning the culprit somehow knew its weakness. But how'd they find out? Monokuma said he didn't tell anyone, right? Indeed. What if they found out- What do you mean? What if the killer took their own- They'd realize it was broken, of course. And once they had Chihiro's handbook- I won't say it's not. I don't know of anyone who- t I might know someone who- Whoa! Seriously? I think the one who may have taken their- <laughs> Here's my answer! Mondo, your handbook got broken in the sauna, didn't it? What? Why? Why do you keep accusing him? Mondo and Taka had an endurance contest in the sauna not too long ago, remember? And for the contest, Mondo just so happened to keep his school uniform on. But little did he realize, he'd also left his handbook in one of his uniform pockets. And when it was all over, Mondo discovered that taking your handbook into the sun. No, wait, hold on. You've got it all wrong. He would never kill. I don't accept this. Show me the proof. Let's test Makoto's assertion. If what he says is correct, then Mondo, you... ...broke your own handbook. In other words, if Mondo's handbook is up, then that proves that what Makoto said... Well, my goddamn handbook works just fine! No, that's wrong! Mondo, the handbook you have right now, is it really yours? The fuck is that supposed to mean? The broken handbook that was in the main hall, isn't that one actually yours? What the heck are you talking about? What I mean is, I think Mondo swapped his handbook out for one that actually works. I think he took Leon's handbook and replaced it with his own. After all, Monokuma said himself that Leon's handbook never should have broken. That's right! The punishment it suffered wasn't nearly enough to destroy it. So then, the broken handbook in the main hall is actually Mondo's. Which would mean that the handbook Mondo has right now is actually Leon's, yes? But doesn't that violate the school regulation that says loaning out your hand- Well, here's how I look at it. There is a rule about loaning your handbook to another student. But if they're dead, they're not a student. It's kind of a gray area, I admit. But no worries. If anything, it just may- As such, I decree that exchanging handbooks with a corpse is not a violation of the rules. Well, Mondo, if I'm wrong about this, you're welcome to say so. I'm happy to admit I made a mistake, but- Son of a bitch. What's wrong, bro? C come on, tell him he's wrong. You are wrong. You have to be wrong! Everything you just said is wrong! 
You made it all up! Okay, then why don't we look back on this case one more that way? Everything will become clear. Killer is you. First, let's. Last night, Celeste saw Chihiro in the where at the time. She was apparently st That something was a blue trap. With bag in hand, she made her way. But how could the victim, who was apparently a girl, Here's exactly what happened! With bag in she made her- But how could the victim, who was a pe
The killer is you! With bag in hand, she made her, but how could the victim? Simple, Be which is why he was able to. Once inside, he met with someone there. And the person he met was the one who killed him. It seems likely that the killer grabbed the nearby dumbbell, approached the unsuspecting Chihiro, and attacked him. And that's where the blood stains on the poster and carpeting in the boys' locker room came from. It was likely in the heat of the moment. The body was arranged, but the murder itself felt unplanned. Which is why the killer hurried to try and hide the act. First, pull, then removing the bloody... The killer is... you! Which is why... Then, remove... Is... It... I refuse to give up yet! Here's exactly what happened! That It was likely in the heat of the moment.
and a girl with and with they that could have been the end of things. Yakuya discovered the body and decided to intervene. So, after he went and grabbed the extension cord from the library, and then he got to work. He used... Then, using the victim, he wanted to create the illusion that Genocide Jack was responsible for this. Here's exactly what happened! Here's exactly what happened! And around the same time that the Akuyo, the killer, having already... And just as the killer expected, the steamy sauna was enough and, and that's how it all... Isn't that right, Mondo Arata? You need evidence! Without any proof? Show me some evidence! You're wrong! I won't listen! I refute you! False! Show me some evidence! I won't listen! False! I refuse to vote! Show me some evidence! You're wrong! I won't listen! I refute you! False! Show me some evidence! I won't listen! False! You're corrupt! I refuse to give up yet! Show me some evidence! You're wrong! I won't listen! I refute you! False! Show me some evidence! I won't listen! False! I refuse to vote! Show me some evidence! You're wrong! I won't listen! I refute you! False! Show me some evidence! I won't listen! False! You're corrupt! I refuse to vote! I refute you! Show me some evidence! This should prove it! If my thinking so far is right, Mondo must have replaced his broken handbook with Leon's. In which case, we can just check each of our handbooks right now. 
Once we do that, we'll... We don't gotta do that. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, I did it. I killed him. Bro? Bro! What are you saying? I got no choice, man. After hearing all that, I gotta just... give up. Go ahead, Monokuma. Get it over with. Ask for the goddamn verdict. Roger that! No waiting! No holding on! Time for the moment we've all been waiting for! Grab your lever and give it a yike! Who will you elect as the blacked? Will you make the right choice? Or the dreadfully wrong one? What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? What? Ta-da! Unbelievable. What? Sorry. What? What is this? Now then, actually, ha! Wait, wait. Sorry, but, but... That's right. I want to change. Yeah, that's right. Indeed. Um, certainly. But... Because...
I knew it. What... what is this? You're wrong! Don't make me repeat myself. I just... Don't fuck with me! Sorry. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Oh. But I want to change. You piece of what? What? Huh? What? No! <laughs> What's wrong? D damn you! I just want... Yeah, that's right. You son of a bitch!
I... I killed Chihira, even after all this time. I'm still just as weak as I've always been. And thanks to that, I did so couldn't keep the promise we made from one man to another. Naturally. Hey. However. What? <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> there is nothing to be done. Interesting.
correct. <laughs> Indeed. Hey. What's this? You. What? Damn. Huh? What the heck? Damn it! <laughs> Ooh, how ex- That's enough. In the name of my family. You're getting all riled up! Well, anyway, like I was saying, this is a pretty good spot. Yeah, a really good spot. Anyway, isn't it amazing how that girl went and killed someone before things even had a chance to get boring? Once things really get moving, it'll be like a roller coaster. There won't be any stopping it. Fear and despair charge forward at a speed nothing can hope to match. But I must admit, I'm disappointed. I went to all the pain and effort of making you part of the group, and you couldn't play your part. You do remember you were supposed to make the first move, right? Well, no biggie. Nothing we can do about it now. So just do your best to make things more exciting from now on, okay? After all, that's what everyone wants to see. As long as you don't want to know my measurements, fire away! Oof, oof, my, my, you really- I know I said you could ask anything, but super denied, ultra denied, demonic denied! Because you see, that's my ace in the hole. And nobody'd be dumb enough to reveal that, right? No matter how close they were to their- Friends. I know I shouldn't cry, but I've had enough. I can't take it anymore. Getting out of here anytime soon? It's impossible. I can't let myself think about how much I want to get out. If I keep thinking like that...
then. How about that? What? <laughs> 